Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. Chairman of the Water and Sewage Corporation giving an update on that forensic audit. Find out why he says the police had to get involved. The Attorney General weighs in on the possibility of marital rape becoming law. The former MP for Long Island, Loretta Butler Turner, comes back into the spotlight for the bill she tabled years ago. Four males are brought before the magistrate's court. Brought to you by Alive, the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Topping news tonight, police are currently investigating theft allegations and other sensitive matters at the Water and Sewage Corporation. That's according to the Water Utilities Chairman Adrian Gibson, who updated the press on the corporation's forensic and internal audits. Jared Higgs reports. Chairman of the Water and Sewerage Corporation, Adrian Gibson, says police are now investigating theft and other sensitive matters related to the water company. Gibson says their involvement came at his behest. I've also written to the police, and uh, the police are also involved in reviewing a few matters um, at the corporation. I won't get into details. Um, but I can, I can tell you that um, the police have been invited to review a few things. Gibson says the police involvement is a relatively new development coming after consultation with Minister of Works Desmond Bannister. This would have been late last week. Um, a letter was issued by myself upon consultation with uh, Minister Bannister and uh, um, I know that uh, I think it would have been about Thursday or so of last week. The corporation currently has two investigations underway, an Ernst and Young forensic audit and an internal audit. Gibson says he expects the results of those investigations to be in his hands in short order. Um, the forensic investigation or the forensic audit, um, that is expected in short course. Um, I know that they um, have indicated that they are preparing um, the report um, and with respect to the internal control and compliance division I expect that uh, elements of their investigation would be um, completed this week. Gibson says his aim is to be completely transparent and once that audit is complete it's going to be tabled in Parliament. I certainly will table uh, the uh, forensic audit um, in the House of Assembly. Um, the internal report um, I I, I anticipate that it would be made public upon consultation, of course, um, with Minister Bannister. Um, uh, but I believe in transparency. I believe in, 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 the, in respect, with respect to the cooperation, um, bringing things into perspective, uh, accountability, um, and you will see that. According to Gibson, five employees were placed on leave. Three have since returned. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. Attorney General Carl Bethel today suggested that criminalizing marital rape may be going a little too far. His comments come days after a United Nations representative claimed the Bahamas was out of step with UN conventions because marital rape has yet to be criminalized. But Bethel revealed that UN rep never raised the issue with him. Jasmine Brown has more in this report. The Attorney General admits it's a complex issue that's also controversial. However, he says lawmakers did not have it on their radar until that UN representative made those statements on Friday. As of today, it wasn't on the government's radar. Um, and in fact, uh, the meeting that I had with the United Nations representative uh, week before last, this issue was not raised. But it has now been raised. And it was raised by UN Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women, Dubravka Simonovic, who told the media last Friday that the most pressing issue facing the Bahamas was marital rape. In response to Simonovic, Minister of State for Legal Affairs Ellsworth Johnson said the time has come to criminalize marital rape. But Bethel said while marital rape was not on the government's radar, the solution may be to toughen up the Matrimonial Causes Act. If we can place the question of sexual violence and or conduct to extort sexual um, services from the spouse within the context of the matrimonial law 
as opposed to in the context of rape. Um, I think that would be a broadly acceptable compromise. In 2009, the Ingram administration tabled a marital rape bill in the House of Assembly. If it was passed, it would have meant that a spouse could be sentenced up to life in prison for the rape of a spouse, even on a first offense, as is the case where others convicted of rape. But the hotly contested bill was shelved following pushback from the religious community, among others. Nearly 10 years later, the church remains divided on this matter. Christian Council President Bishop Delton Fernander told the Nassau Guardian the vanguards of the church haven't changed. But Pastor Cedric Moss, who opposed the 2009 bill, said over the weekend that he was never opposed to the idea of punishing men who use force to have sex with their wives and insisted marital rape is different from other forms of rape. Bethel called Moss' comments a reasonable compromise. We've tried to be as consultative as possible on everything, and this matter will be no different. But um, if it is possible to forge a compromise that will have the effect of protecting vulnerable spouses from that sort of abuse, we would be more than happy to proceed forthrightly to achieve um, the legislative change that will give greater protection to the vulnerable and the weak in our society. Bethel said it remains to be seen whether the parties concerned will be able to compromise on the issue. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Former opposition leader Loretta Butler Turner also weighed in on renewed calls for marital rape legislation. She called Attorney General Carl Bethel's comments on the issue caveman-like thinking. April Sands reports. Well, maybe the law isn't for you, but it is for those that feel violated. Words from the former MP Loretta Butler Turner today. After being one of the first to table the marital law rape bill. Rape is rape is rape. Back in 2009, then Minister of State for Social Development Loretta Butler Turner tabled the marital rape bill in the House of Assembly. Under that bill, marital rape would have been criminalized. However, before the controversial bill was debated and passed, it was shelved. Butler Turner says while that bill was placed on the back burner back then, she hopes that doesn't happen again. At that time, the FNM did not have a huge mandate in Parliament. I think it was 21 to 18 was the split um, uh, that we experienced. So you would have had to have a huge majority to carry this. The governments tend to um, bend to the voices, the loudest voices. And you know what I found very interesting was there were loud voices, but there were not great numbers. Secretly, there were people writing me, inboxing me, phoning me and saying to me, we need to move forward with this. Yesterday, Minister of State for Legal Affairs Ellsworth Johnson asserted that anybody who thinks that the law is contemporary in terms of a man being able to take his wife without her consent, meet me on the battlefield of debate. While Butler Turner mentioned she's happy to see those few men who have spoken up on the matter, she expressed disappointment in the Attorney General's statement this morning, saying that the issue of marital rape is not on their radar and that the term marital rape should instead be labeled as spousal abuse. I'm very disappointed to hear the Attorney General speak so loosely as if it's a very flippant matter. To denigrate or to, to suggest that rape should be considered only spousal abuse, then I, I would go so far as to say that that is really a very archaic, almost caveman type thinking. And that is not the type of leadership we need in this country today. Butler Turner says she's looking forward to hearing the prime minister's views on the matter as he has a background in women's health. You have a prime minister whose wife says she wants an office so that she can start leading such initiatives. Well, I don't think she needs an office. Lend your voice to this. This is a very important matter. Your husband, the Prime Minister of the Bahamas, would have seen, I would imagine, in his lifetime, many cases of women who have been raped. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we raise it from the very highest level in our land. And that is starting with the Prime Minister. 
Butler Turner's comments come after a United Nations expert on violence against women asserted on Friday that the Bahamas is out of step with the UN's convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women, as it has failed to criminalize all forms of marital rape. Now Butler Turner says she hopes that others will be their brother's keeper on a matter that many Bahamians have been silent on. Reporting for our news, I'm April Sands. PLP Deputy Leader Chester Cooper has asserted that while there is some relief in the fact that the Bahamas avoided a further downgrade from credit ratings agency Standard & Poor's, the maintained junk status is not much to celebrate. Cooper once again urged the government to communicate a clear plan for growth and economic recovery. He said in a statement, it is hoped that the government is receptive to S&P's advice and analysis on the need to focus on economic growth. So far this term, the government has appointed a committee on the ease of doing business. However, it is critical that the approach is, comprehensive, is a comprehensive one, inclusive of small and medium-sized local businesses. The Bahamas saw its outlook slashed to junk status in December 2016, as S&P noted that the government's financial position had continued to weaken. The leaders of opposition and government business in the Senate going head-to-head -head this morning. The fiery exchange was sparked over the National Honors Regulations 2017. Those regulations were discussed by Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis in Parliament last week. But while giving notices of subsequent meetings in the Senate this morning, Leader of Opposition Business Fred Mitchell questioned the honor system established by the bill. Will the government confirm that it is an intention of the government to continue to grant British honors to Bahamian citizens? And if the answer is yes, would the government not agree that the duality of the honor system should cease and Bahamian honors only should be awarded? Well, that did not sit well with Leader of Government Business in the Senate, Carl Bethel, who pointed out the regulations are a part of the National Honors Bill 2016 that were debated and passed by the former Christie administration. That sparked a back and forth between both men. Don't ask a question um, that is suggesting that you have some principled position. You voted for that bill in 2016. Don't tell me what question to ask. Don't qu tell me what questions to ask. Okay, this, is not, this is not speech time. This is notices for subsequent meetings. And, when, and there is a point. We pass the point on the order paper where answers to questions are given. So what are you doing? Throwing the baby out of the bathwater again. I'm saying stick by the rules. Stick by the rules. And it did not end there with Bethel labeling Mitchell's inquiry disingenuous. It is, is, it is, it is, also it is a disingenuous... No, 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 same thing, Senator same Mitchell. thing. Senator no commentary Mitchell. on this. This ain't the I time for mean, commentary. I mean this ain't no time I mean, for commentary. Don't tell me I can't make a comment. No, I'm not saying what you can or cannot do. I'm saying it's not the time for commentary. In other news, three men and a male juvenile face murder charges in the magistrate's court today. Our George O'Bain was in court and filed this report. Four teenagers are brought before the magistrate's court to face various murder charges stemming from October to December of this year. A 17-year-old juvenile, 18-year-old Keith Barr of Camp Road in the black plaid shirt, and 18-year-old Toriano Cummings of Pyfram Road in the tan shirt all appeared before Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt to answer to the charge of murder. It is alleged that on December 10th, by means of unlawful harm, Barr and Cummings did cause the death of Louise Naissance. According to police reports, shortly after 1 p.m., three men were working on a construction site on Shirley Street when they were approached by two men, one of whom was armed with a firearm, who demanded cash and shot two of the construction workers. The third worker was allegedly gun-butted before the men fled on foot. Nasons was pronounced dead on the scene. Barr and Cummings also faced an armed robbery charge. It is alleged that on December 10, the pair robbed Kane's for a scar of $126 and St. Matt Joseph of a Samsung cell phone valued $100 and $200 in cash. The juvenile was charged with accessory for allegedly helping Barr and Cummings to avoid the due process of the law. They were not required to enter a plea. The case will proceed by a way of a voluntary bill of indictment. They were remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections and returned to court on February 22, 2018. Reporting for Our News, I'm Georgie O'Bain. So for Our News, a multi-million dollar project promises higher quality water for Long Island. The details are after this break.